Hi, I'm Tammy and I do math for coffee. Today is the first lesson of the full geometry class. Lesson one, points, lines, and planes, dot, 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 meaning like there's going to be some other stuff in here as well. In geometry, you have to start with some basic building blocks in order to create other things. And the first one is a point. Just make a dot and then you label it. And that's how we name them. We use capital letters to name our points. If you imagine you take an infinite number of points and put them all together side by side by side by side, but really, really close together, you would get a thing that looks a little like this going forever and ever in both directions. So we put arrows on both ends and that would be a line. Now to name a line, we have to have a couple points. We aren't going to try to list all the points because there's infinitely many. So if I grab this one and that one, then I have two points on the line and that's all I need to name it. So I can name this line BC and then you put a little icon over the top that looks like a line. Or you could even go with CB and you still have to put the little line icon over the top. And let's say you don't want to use the entire line going forever and ever in both directions, but you want to just talk about a piece of it. That would be called a line segment. And so it doesn't go forever and ever in both directions. In fact, it has endpoints. It can go back and forth. So I don't can't say this is the start point and that's the end point. We just call them both endpoints. I'll label this one D and that one E. Now, naming a line segment, you put the little icon over the top, but it doesn't have arrows on both ends. This tells me when I read it, when you write it down on a piece of paper, that you are talking about the segment D to E, or you can flip the letters and go from E to D. Okay, that was Bell. We keep pushing on. We did points, we did lines, and a line segment, and then plane. I'm not talking about the ones up in the sky. I'm talking about something that's flat like this, but imagine a piece of paper that's going forever in two directions. It's just a flat level thing. We call that a plane. These are a little bit hard to draw on a piece of paper. So I do something like this. You have to imagine this thing is going forever and not ha it has no edges on it. A piece of paper has edges on it, but this thing doesn't. Now, to name a plane, you have to have three points. I'm up to E, so this would be F, G, and H. To name it, I've seen it written down a couple different ways. You'll have to talk to your teacher about how they're going to do it. Usually in the textbooks that I've seen, they just use the word plane, F, G, H. But I have seen some where they put this little shape in front of it like this and F, G, H. Points, lines, planes, now we're up to the dot, dot, dot part. For some reason, and I think it's because I'm a science fiction nerd, this is like my favorite one of these. It's a ray. Rays have an initial point and then they go off like that but they go forever in that direction. To name a ray, you actually need to have a second point on that ray. Here's the reason. You could have anything starting here, but you don't know which direction it's going, right? It could be going in any direction. If you're talking about this one, there'll be a point on the ray somewhere. This one will be I. And this one will be J. Naming them is very specific. We have to start with this one, which is called the initial point. The fact that I have an I here is just a coincidinky. Okay, this is called the initial point. It's where the ray starts. The start point for the ray. And so when you name them, you have to put that letter first. And then the second one that it goes through is this letter. And the little icon you put on there is just a tiny little ray. Okay, two rays that have the same initial point will look like this. 
And again, rays have to have another point that distinguishes them from one another. So what do we have here? This one will be my starting initial point. This one, H, I, J, K, L, and M. And then what we have here is an angle. We'll talk about angles more when it's time to talk about angles, but really the angle is this thing right here, is this little space, and how wide apart these guys are. That's the angle. The point right here is very interesting. It's, since it's the initial point for both, on an angle it has a different name. It's called a vertex. That's the vertex of the angle. When you name angles, sometimes you only need to have one letter uh, when we get in there, I'll explain when, in context why it might be a little different. But for today, I'm going to name this angle using all three points. There's two ways to do that. We could start at L, K, M. And you put this little angle thing in front of it. Now make sure you make that slanty enough so it doesn't look like your L, because it's not an L. It's This part's very slanty. Or I could go the other way and go M, K, L. Now, I did something very specific there. I can't start with the K. Because the K is the vertex, it needs to be in the middle of those three. And we'll talk about that more as we get into the course and we talk about angles. Oh hey, I almost forgot something. A couple words you need to know. Scroll back up to the top here. When you have two points that are on the same line, they are called collinear. So find a spot, write this in. Collinear means that points on the same line. How to remember that word? A couple ways. One, line is in the word, and co. Uh, another word you may be more familiar with in the real world is called co-worker, somebody that you work next to, somebody you work with. These points are on the same line. B and C are collinear. A is not on that line, so A is not collinear with B and C. So you're going to need to know that word. And there's one a word that's very much like that. It's called coplanar, which means... Is it AR or ER? I told you I can't spell. We're going to go with AR. Coplanar. Points on the same plane. Yeah. Okay. You, some parts of your brain shut off when you start recording for YouTube. It's a known fact. Okay, so F, G, and H are actually on the same plane, so we can call them coplanar, and you're going to remember that word because of that root right there. Plane, plan, plane, and line for collinear. All right, let's see if you learned some of this notation. I'm going to draw something. I want you to name it. All right, go ahead and name that. That's a line. So it could have been KR with the little line symbol over it, or RK with the little line symbol over it. Okay, that's the drawing. You name it. This is a ray, and this is the initial point. There's only one possible answer, and that is ST with a little symbol over the top. Okay, let's reverse this. I'm going to give you the name, and I want you to draw the thing. Here's the name. All right, draw that thing. Might need to pause. I'm coming right in with the answer. This is a line segment, and it has endpoints, and those endpoints are A and D. You could have put the D here and the A there. That's fine. They can switch. The only thing they can't really switch around too much is the ray. Give you another name and I'm going to ask you to draw it. Draw that thing. Here comes the answer. Pause if you're not ready. Okay, that is a ray and the starting initial point is you. 
So the U must be here and the Z is on that. I'm going to give you another name and you're going to draw it. Draw that thing. Here comes the answer. Are you ready? This is an angle and the B is the vertex. So I have to make an angle. Yours can look, can look different than mine, but I do know that this point right here has to be the B. It doesn't really matter which way the A and the C go on the drawing, but it should look like an angle, and that's what it is. Thanks for watching. I will uh, see you in the next one. Bye.